Boom, hi. I thought it'd be time to catch up because do you know that I don't believe I've done a big board update for uh, two months. We're 19th of October. And I think the last time we did an update was around about beginning of August or uh, middle of August. And since then, it's been a kind of hectic time with gaming and uh, family with my son um, heading off to college, which was kind of exciting. And lots of uh, unexpected travel with my job. Um, uh, plan was for me not to travel with my job because I'd done a lot of travel with my last role and this new role was not supposed to be as uh, travel centric but apparently it is. So that's okay. It means I need to find some uh, games that we can play in a hotel room of which there are plenty. And of course, we always have vassals. So uh, we've got that going for us, which is nice. Uh, I thought I'd touch base on what's been played since we last spoke, because I'm sure I made grand plans of all these things that I was going to play and immediately saw the bright bunny rabbit uh, off in the corner and went and played a bunch of different things. So if you are a regular uh, watcher of the, these videos or of uh, following the blog, you'll be able to recall what I had to say in the August update look at this and go, man, that guy's just has no clue. Uh, well, some of you know that already. So let's see, three gameplays of Stalingrad, the Inferno on the Volga. Lots of fun, great artwork, great production quality, fantastic, I think, fantastic theme. I think there's a lot of tension and decision making that uh, it, that harkens to the the challenges that were faced by the Germans because uh, I played the solo scenarios only uh, there's a co-op uh, mode and there's also a uh, two-player mode but I mainly stuck with the solo mode because I'm not much of a solo gamer and I want to see how the AI worked and it worked out pretty well I, I found it uh, to be extremely simple AI that was amazingly effective so enjoyed that three times back to back first two times I really didn't play it right uh, but I also didn't play well and I think it is a game that will probably keep on giving to you uh, with the with the base game and then I think if you layer in some of the more advanced stuff please go ahead be a sucker for punishment but it's really freaking hard to beat that way and I don't enjoy that I like to at least think I can win some some of the time. So there's that. Uh, then I played two, uh, of, uh, one scenario twice, and I've done some uh, stop motion on one of the playthroughs, and then I wrote a narrative uh, coverage of uh, this game, the Lock and Low Tactical Untold Stories, Heroes of Normandy, and I'm not a huge Lock and Load World War II guy. I don't play a lot of the stuff I've I own it all and I've played some of it and I play usually play with people online and we usually play World War II stuff but I'm not like ah, I gotta go play World War II lock and load I, I like it but it's not my it's just it's something about tactical World War II doesn't grab me that's why I don't play ASL I think but nevertheless I had a great freaking time because the story that comes out of it is really cool and you can compare it to the written story or uh, you know audio book of uh of the characters that are in these stories. That's why it's called The Untold Stories. So it comes with a book, a download book, an MP4 listening thingy, and you can buy the maps and the scenarios and it all goes together and you grab your heroes in Normandy and off you go. And that was super duper fun and really enjoyed that and, and got me uh, motivated to write my own story. Took some, I think, some pretty cool pictures and then put some filters on them and made it, uh, made it a lot of fun. Uh, cranked out two scenarios of uh, the MBT um, German module, uh, what do you want to call it? expansion module for MBT from GMT Games. Good stuff, good stuff. Really enjoyed those. I can't, uh, I can't recommend MBT high, highly enough if you want to do tank on tank warfare and put a couple of platoons on the map. Just throw all those advanced rules in there and just deal with it. It's not that hard. It's all segmented. You just got to leave. You, you don't know how to use morale. Read the morale rule. Look at the table. Roll a die. Work it out. It's not hard. It's really not hard. Uh, 
fun, fun, fun. Proud Monster Deluxe, man, put a lot of time into that game. Uh, 30 plus hours on Vassal, uh, <clears throat> three, th three starts. I only logged two on Board Game Geek because one of them was really only one turn. And frustrating, uh, in the end, frustrating. Uh, I think it's got, there's a gem in there, but the, the wording and the rules really, really lets it down. Yay. Back, sorry, we got disconnected there. I, uh, I realized that the video was starting to lag a little bit. So I closed all the apps. I didn't realize it had like 40 apps open on the phone. Anyway, we were talking about Proud Monster and I was talking about how the, I think the rule book lets things down a little bit, but there's a gem there and uh, I'm not the guy who worked that out. That's not my job. So uh, the designer and developer, Chappie, uh, Don Johnson, listened a little bit but rules really require a dedicated fan to go through the rules and write a rules summary for what the rules actually mean. And, what, and, 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 and then I think I could get over some of the rationalizations I need to make. Uh, a game that has you know, 20 different little Easter eggs in it that you've got to find out and explore in a monster game. Play it 20 times to work it out. Not doing that. Not doing that. So it's that sucker's back on the shelf. So we 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 panned that. We both agreed that it was just uh, not not our cup of tea for the time being. Got two plays of Smolensk, uh, Barbarossa derailed in. One was seven or eight turns of the opening uh, campaign, and then uh, two turns of one of the later scenarios. And I realized I set up uh, made a mistake setting up as the Germans and. That really foobarred them uh, from the get-go, so it was going to be uh, a, a debacle, and I just couldn't be bothered uh, resetting the game uh, on the map. But enjoyed it. I think it's a good OCS game. If you uh, want to play some of the smaller scenarios to start with, it is a good intro game. Do not set the campaign up if you're a noob and try and get started. You will you you, you will look at the experts and their postings and the way they play, and you will not be able to replicate that because you will not be able to invest the time to, to make the fine-grained, fine-tuned decisions that need to be made for this, uh, this, this game. There's a lot of thinking that has to go into the first three turns, and I think you're much, much better off as a, as a new player just trying to play some of the smaller scenarios to start with and then move on to a bigger scenario, which is kind of a, a cool thing for you as a, as a game player. I think you'll love it. If you like OCS, you're going to love this one mapper from Multiman Publishing. Uh, it'd be one of those games, actually, that would have been really cool if they had have made the hexes larger and made it a larger one mapper. Uh, you know, you can make uh, maps larger than 36 by 24 or whatever the standard size is that, uh, that OCS uses. And we could have had nice and nice bigger hexes. That would have been kind of nice. But that's the only other, that's the only thing I'd say about that game. Uh, and man, Under the Iron Sky started, uh, so I've played that twice, right? Or maybe, yeah, twice. And uh, started off a vassal game. And uh, we got uh, through moving one or two units. <laughs> we, we went through the air game and kind of the pre-war stuff and uh, doing all that. And playing it on vassal by email was torturous for us. I think it would be fantastic being played live and opposed. And uh, Mitch and I, Mitch Land, the, the game designer from uh, GMT for the next War series, he and I are looking for a way to get online together to play that and, and pick it up where we left off. Uh, it was pretty interesting. The, the, what had occurred so far was pretty interesting. And uh, I'm really disappointed that we didn't get much further in that because... I think with Mitch's experience with Next War and the Next War series and my experience with the Next War from SBI, I think between the two of us, we were starting to see some things that were really, really cool about Under an Iron Sky. Uh, I think I may have just called it Next War earlier on, but Under an Iron Sky is what it's called. Uh, from, uh, anyway, from, I can't remember the name of the publishing company now. How about that? Um, now I'm more flummoxed. Uh, I think there are some 
really cool mechanics and really cool ideas in there that lift up the old SBI game and make it a much, much better game than the next war game, the old one. But I also think there were things that some things that weren't done that could have been done to rationalize the number of counters, simplify some of the gameplay with, and reduce some of the die rolling that, that's probably required for a monster game. And, uh, and we didn't get far enough into it to really prove out our assessments, right? So leave it at that. But fun, beautiful production quality, really well done effort from a first time designer. He just uh, shipped his second run. So I think nearly a thousand copies have been sold. That's pretty impressive for a 200 euro game. So nice job <coughs> for Brizio. Um, almost finished my Attila the Hun scenario of, uh, the, I think it's a Catalonian fields or something like that, 451 AD. Having a great fun playing that. It's an SPQR. Uh, module the scenario that is of course from the great battles of history from GMT uh, almost done with that we will you'll see posts about that coming up I'm on turn six of the Eastern Front series AGC Army Group Center digging that Germans are kicking ass a little too easy I'm struggling with the German ability uh, sorry the Russian ability to be effective in defense and uh, I think that's probably just part of the course for this part of the war and uh, you know there's there's not a lot for the Russians to do other than sit there and take a beating uh, there probably are things they should be doing but uh, I haven't worked out what they are yet uh, let's see played the battle of Blenheim and yeah it's I'm not sure that, that game's for me I, I, I got tedious after a bit I think it's potentially an interesting system maybe just not the right battle uh, maybe it needs to be play opposed before I can really say, hey, it's awesome. So uh, we'll uh, so to TBD on what I really think about that game, but that was fun and to a certain degree. Uh, played another lock and load scenario, uh, also World War II, but this time from Heroes of the Pacific, in the Hell Frozen Over mod, uh, module, the, the little expansion pack they put out. And it's got the big uh, X Maps uh, uh, island of Atu. Uh, terrain with the massive hills and steep rocky outcroppings and cliffs and all sorts of fun stuff and all really neat geographical and uh, uh, geographical and weather related rules that make it a fun and interesting exercise that was also highly narratively driven loved that uh, a lot I encourage you to go buy that thing because it's actually a pretty cool uh, set of scenarios there I think I told you guys that I played the Japanese uh, Tenka Kanatsu or whatever it's called. I can't pronounce it now. I looked it up when I first started writing and doing video about it and had a great time with that game. Hexasim has just crushed the Japanese feudal tactical system uh, mode and it cannot wait to play anything they publish from the, from, from, for that series of games. It's spectacular, great fun and fantastic artwork and production values just kill it just go get all of it it's great and four player victory roads a lot of fun a lot of frustration but a lot of fun uh that is a good game that needs a lot of thinking and a lot of work and it's a very hard game to play solo it just it's a lot a lot of work but uh good stuff so that's what i've been doing now I'm kind of at a, at a, I've only got two games set up at the moment and uh, I am setting up a, 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 The Legend Begins, uh, Mark Semenich's game that was for, it's from some Pacific Rim Publishing or something like that, I don't know who it is. Uh, apparently you can go get it for 40 bucks anywhere. I thought it was out of print, but it's not. Uh, so we're playing that on Vassal. We're kicking that off in a couple of weeks. Uh, I've got... Uh, what else have I got going on? Uh, setting up and doing review of the rules for Frozen Hell, the TCS system. I'm going to be playing that with my buddy Jack after we finish on Vassal, after we finish the Aspen Essling 
uh, scenario from the old Napoleonic Brigade system from MMP, the now dead and defunct, as far as I can tell, uh, uh, MBS system, which, as we're playing, just is so good, so thematic, and so clean. The rules system, I bet you could graft the, the, the new line of battle ACW rules system onto the top of this thing and really make it... Uh, uh, even a faster playing game. We got through three or four or five turns in an hour or so, hour and a half, as the forces came came together in Aspen Essling. Really enjoying that. So we're going to keep trying to play that. In fact, I think I'm playing next Thursday when I'm on the road. So that'll be something I'll be doing on Vassal on my dinky little uh, Surface tablet thingy. Uh, so there's that going on. I'm thinking that I might grab the old SBI Sinai game and uh, punch that and play the 1956 scenario so that's uh, potentially coming up and I want to work out a way to play a game with all of you using Freedom of the Galaxy maybe making it a multiplayer experience where you guys would uh, get to vote on what the different characters do or something along that along that those lines I should say so that might be something we might experiment with and I'm open to suggestions in the comments below. I'd be appreciating appreciating any thoughts on that for those who have, of you who have played. Uh, maybe offer some ideas on how a multiplayer thing might work. I'm still working slowly through getting set up for City Fight multiplayer with you guys. It'll be a play by poll where you'll get to decide what the either what the uh, the, the Taliban do or, or what the Marines do in uh, uh, Fallujah. So that'll be an updated City Fight gameplay for Fallujah uh, using the old SBI City Fight rule, ses rule system and maps, etc. So that, that'll be fun to, to, to look for, look out for that. I did try and set up SBI Crusades. The rules are just not for me. So but we didn't even get started in punching that out. So I put that away. I unfortunately packed up a GN strike as well. It was overwhelming in terms of choices that need to be made for this little brain here. So I'm tabling that for another time and we'll hopefully come back to it. I did manage to get a couple of turns done, but not very much. And we'll uh, you'll see some content about that coming up. Wow. <clears throat> uh, I really am hankering to get great battles of the American Civil War, great campaigns of the American Civil War uh, onto the table. But I do want to do a linked campaign. Uh, so I, I, I'm looking for something that will put uh, two or more modules together and something that will play out over a couple of months of, of, of game time. And uh, just to kind of get that grand campaign feel from that system. I've played a little bit, a little bit of it here and there, and I'm comfortable enough with the rules that I feel like I can go and get get after it and, and really screw it up big time. So that should be fun. And also, I've got this hankering to play next war Poland again. So maybe I can find a smaller scenario in there that we can we can fire up. Of course, in the meantime, uh, has new shiny things come in like NATO Air Commander that's on its way to me shortly. And a few other bits and pieces that uh, will be turning up over the next couple of months. I uh, will be uh, going, oh, look at that. I might, I might go play that. So please stay tuned. And I can see a mosquito about to attack me. Um, lots of backlog of articles that have not been written yet and uh, or finished. Bear with me. We'll get through it all. Uh, some things that you will see posted over the next couple of months have been played several months ago. I just haven't gotten around to uh, writing them up like Konigsberg. Uh, in fact, I'm behind the camera. I'm looking at a screen full of uh, a 20 megabyte uh, Word document with all, excuse me, with all the photographs and stuff like that. So I've got to now remember what I did and why it was so much fun. Anyway, that's probably an overly long update on what's been going on for the last 60 or 50 days thereabouts. And I will look forward to talking to you soon. I guess the next time we get together will probably be sometime around December, Christmas time. So maybe we'll do another giveaway. By the way, the person who won the last giveaway, I sent you two, two PMs. You haven't responded. 
So I am going to redraw that giveaway if I don't hear from you. Just heads up. All right. Talk to all of you soon. Ciao.